gallery is just to have a spot where people can come for any kind of reason to do uh, music, performance, art, visual art, uh, spoken word, um, whatever, anything really original. Um, it's supposed to be not a really a place to like, you know, sell tickets and sell artwork, but to be more of a place for people to create artwork. Hey, my name is Gregory Rassam, and uh, I'm a mammal here on Broad Street. And there's about six people who help collectively uh, bring ideas and organize and bring stuff to the floor here at Mammal. And uh, I'm just one of those people that helps out. Tyler got started through three people, which was uh, Dan Dewberry, Brian Egan, and Chris Yonker. And they had a building somewhere else that unfortunately got shut down. And they were looking for a spot. And then behind me is Richard's place. And uh, they kind of met him and talked uh, to him and Kyle Kessler. And they saw the building and the space here. And uh, and they ended up renting and leasing it. Um, upstairs is the uh, art gallery. And downstairs is the concert hall. And then on the lower level, um, we have like six studio spaces that brought, uh, artists rent out. And uh, up, upstairs as well, next to the gallery, um, above Richard's space, we have an open like community, uh, communal like space to work where a whole bunch of different artists kind of work in this big area. On the walls, we have this performance. Uh, downstairs, we have all kinds of shows. Uh, we have any kind of music you can imagine, jazz, rock, uh, rap, classical, orchestras I've played here. Mammal Gallery adds a positive outlet for different creators around Atlanta. Um, there's a lot of events that happen here that brings out a lot of big crowds and brings in a lot of money to the venue, uh, like the No Name concert earlier this week. They've met, um, different people have met with us. Um, I know the awnings here that are all different colors now, um, we painted them as a community. Uh, all these different uh, businesses and people who are on the street helped, helped with that. I know the city um, donated the money that would for, for the paint itself. So, and they've also um, helped pay for some of the murals and things that have gone up around here. Um, so they, they do have a hand and there is, you know, there's kind of a call for you know this kind of area to to exist, so I think uh, some people are willing to willing to help uh, help help this place stay around. A local foundation um, had an initiative that was an arts artist initiative to um, place artists from all over the country and, and invite them to come and settle settle kind of like this uh, parts of the city that were um, physically um, not as occupied and um, a little um, neglected and run down and such and that was their approach there's this guy named uh, Richard Florida, if you've ever read anything by him, he's kind of like this major proponent of artists being um, uh, first adopters, first um, kind of like priming the pump of development and because they're willing to take more risks be in, um, and be more creative in terms of use and approach of, of different spaces um, and then they will draw in gentrification and so he argues that people should like as policy, use artists as a means to hmm. prime the pump of gentrification or mm -hmm. redevelopment or whatever, whatever you want to call it. I think there was this sort of premise that 
been a, a what, what do you call it? A blighted area that there is nothing of value physically. I don't know if that's the truth, but I think that's completely untrue. I think um, I think we are neglecting um, lessons learned and um, uh, knowledge as well as a, a sense of community that is here that's not survived and thrived and we just bring people in without any sensitivity to that mm -hmm. that is um that's just a shame to do that because you lose something of value mm -hmm. um and that language as well as those that knowledge and those connections and that community and you break it um, ironically that's what we're good at in atlanta mm -hmm. we do that really well like mm -hmm. physically Put in the highway, right in the middle of a community, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's the way we do things. It's kind of crap. Actually, the ironic thing is, even though artists are brought in through initiatives like, oh, we'll give you a free, forgivable mortgage, and that's what was given in the case of Chattanooga, Tennessee. The artists, though, they are concerned often with where they're going because they care about the community. Actually, that's the thing that usually attracts them because they want to live in an urban environment. Aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Right, aesthetics and the opportunity, the history, mm -hmm. the language of the physical space. Mm -hmm. Like they care about those things and they care about the community. I hope we can build a great relationship with the uh, the owners of the building and we can expand and really I just hope we are here. You know, it would be nice if we're here 10 years from now or 20 years from now and uh, we just slowly help, you know, artists uh, get that foothold in the community. Um, having their first show or playing here uh, for the first time and uh, building that relationship um, because that's just you know what I feel like I'm part of and what I feel like Mammal's part of is just this giant community of different types of art and artists. So Saving Mammal is uh, so we you know we were trying to own, have ownership of the building and unfortunately that didn't happen. Uh, so now we're trying to just work with the people who do own the building and uh, the saving mammal is we're just having a fundraiser um, just for costs, just for having our doors open and paying electricity and water and things of that nature, just so we can keep having performances and other awesome things happening here.